you know, you're the only one on right. If you have any questions, go ahead and jump on board. Okay, sounds good. Okay, what I'm going to go through first is a just a four slide PowerPoint, which just kind of gives an overview of the truck builder module. And generally, the way the process works is you define up front the available trailer profiles. So this would be like the size of the trailer, if indeed it's pallet, palletized, what type of pallets it used, um, and if there's any compartments in that trailer, like freezer or hazardous. We then get the order profiles, which, which has the type of product that is to go on these trailers, and then we get a warehouse profile, which gives the basic locations of each item within the warehouse and the zones that uh, they are in. I don't know why my next button is not. Okay, so to fill out the attributes of a trailer, there's generally three main pieces to it. One is the trailer size. So this is going to be like the physical length, width, and height of the trailer. And you would just key the various type of trailers available in. You would then, within each trailer, define if there are any specific zones. Like in the grocery, you might have a freezer section and a dry goods. Uh, you might have a hazardous section. And then the type of pallets or totes that each that can be used in each section. So a pallet is what we would put items on um, as the primary type of unit. And then the tote style would be if there's small product that you pick into a tote from the various zones in the building, if there's specific tote styles that go to each zone of that trailer. So you could have a tote defined only for hazardous material, and you could have a tote defined for freezer type product. Then what happens is we take the order profiles and we determine for a certain route how much, which ones go to each zone of that trailer. We then break that product down and palletize it to determine the actual physical size required for each zone. Then you have one of two options. Either the system can select the, tote, the trailer style that best fits the requirements, or you can define that this trailer style is always used for a specific route. Or you can say this trailer style is the default, and then you always have the ability to change that. Once the trailers have been assigned, then that information is then used for the picking process and loading so that it's basically generating waves. And the size of those waves would be dependent upon your warehouse, obviously. But it would be you know, releasing the waves so that the sequence that they are picked and then arrive at the loading dock, that they can be loaded directly onto the trailer as much as possible so, you're, so that your dock congestion goes down. So that's kind of an overview of how that trailer process works. Any questions on that before I go into the actual application? Um, so if you go back to the previous slide, yep. does that actually look at the order makeup itself and the cube space that each order takes up and it actually dictates what order should go in what pallet? Yes. Okay. You have the you have the ability to configure it. Do orders have to be on the same pallet, or could let's say there's 20 orders that have to go into this zone B? Is the sequencing of the items with amongst these pallets based upon the picking um, sequence in the building, or is it based upon the stops? That if that trailer has to make multiple stops, or is it just do we have to keep an entire order? together as much as possible. Right. So you can do it by order, by stop, or 
in your warehouse. It all depends upon, for instance, if you had a trailer that just had general product and it's all going to one location, the pallets you'd potentially want built so that the picking of it was in a certain sequence in your warehouse by zone, potentially. Okay. Okay. Then the application And I'm just going to kind of walk through the configuration screens. So this is where you would define what the pallet sizes are. And so you would indicate what the stackable height is. So if a trailer is of different heights, you could define that here. Then you, would, you can define what are the various zones available. Now, right here, we're just defining that there is a zone called tote, and there may be one for freezer. We're not indicating where on the trailer at this point. And then the totes, if indeed there is different tote styles, you can define those here as to what they're specifically for and what the inside and outside dimensions are and if there's any restrictions as far as weight or units. Then you start determining, then you start defining the trailers. So here I've got truck 74 and it's five pounds of deep two pallets wide, here's the dimensions on it, and I can define what the zones are, and if I was to go into here and look at truck 74, this is basically how those pallets are defined. The sequencing you see here indicates what these pallets, what type of product can be placed on these pallets, and the sequence, so in this case, position one, is primarily for freezer, and in this case, it's the only thing that can go there. In position two, we're saying the first priority of a group of product is case. If there's still room on that pallet, I will allow additional zone, additional type of product to be consolidated onto that pallet. So you're kind of indicating the sequencing and the purpose of the various pallet positions within each trailer. And this is typically a one-time exercise that you go through. So, and then we can define a route and what the default trailer style is for the various routes. Then what will happen is when you go to process, I'm going to pick a certain building and a route, and I'm just going to process this. This is going to show that it's there's only one zone in this trailer, which is called pallet. So I'm going to process this route, and when it's completed, it'll build the pallets based upon the product and the sequencing that we defined, and then balance the product within those pallets as much as possible. And it should be done here any second. So these are the pallets that it created. If I click on a pallet, it'll give you some basic summary information concerning it, as well as the detail as far as uh, order ID, what stop it's going to, the SKU, and the detail information concerning each item on that pallet. If I wanted to put a note, associated with this pallet, you know, like I may have attach red label. I can put a note here and save this. So now this note will come up or can be displayed to the user on the dock when they're in the loading process to know any special handling or labeling requirements that they need for that specific pallet. Um, in addition to what's on each pallet, I can go into a screen. This is what's on pallet 705, the actual SKUs, what totes, what order IDs, and I can move these around if for some reason I need to. So I can say you know, I want this order ID to go to one of these other pallets. Once I'm complete with this palette, I can assign this a tr 
trailer number, a driver, and a dock door. Now this can either pre, be preloaded or defined, or here I'm going to do it one at a time. I'll just do it as I do each trailer. Now a sample of what will happen if there's not enough room, and this is what will happen. These are the pallets that it placed. These three pallets, there was not enough room for it on the trailer. Now you have several choices here. One, you could just select a, a larger trailer that could accommodate it. The other thing is you could exclude those items, those pallets, from this trailer, and they then become the highest priority for that next for that route on the next day. You can reshuffle the sequencing of the items on these pallets. So if you wanted um, to move these pallets around and maybe take pallet 712 and not ship it out, you can readjust that into the unassigned area if you wanted to. So this is how you would manipulate the orders within a pallet, uh, within a trailer if indeed it all did not fit. The other way of doing an exclusion is a prioritization assigned to each order. And, or if there's a multiple stops, if you want to do a fair share so that you send something to every stop and you only hold up those items which priority-wise are very low. They're not for back orders or something, it's just for normal replenishment, if indeed everything would not fit. Um, and that's basically the process. You can consolidate and merge these sections together if you want, as well as you can do the very same thing to pallets. If indeed you wanted to combine products from 711 and 702 together, you do have the ability to merge certain items or consolidate those between pallets. So you might have defined originally that these two types of product could, be, could not be mixed, but in an exception you could always uh, handle that. Um, and that's generally how that process works. You can either process the routes individually or you could just have this run and it assigns everything once you're comfortable with the assignment process and just print out maybe a summary report if indeed certain routes could not be accommodated. Um, any questions? No, not right now. I think we're okay. good. Um, and like I said, you can take a look at each section of the trailer. This will give you uh, what order IDs are on it. If there's totes, here's the tote, and what type of tote it is, and some specifics on it. Um, and again, the, once you define these trailers and the sequencing, then this information then is passed back, and then when the wave picking is, is released to the warehouse, either through the RF or maybe printed labels or however you may do picking, uh, it would be printed, you can define that sequencing so that you're doing these pallets first, followed by the others. And you, can, you can control that via the WMS of how, how that should be accepted or released. And that's pretty much um, the information you can click on. This this will give you a summary by compartment of the trailer with the total cubic footage in and the units and weight. Um, and this is broken down currently by warehouse. So for the LADC, here's the routes. And you, again, you, you can pick whichever one. It would then process that data, assign it to the pallets. That would then be released. And either you would configure these trailers to be defaulted to a specific trailer, and if indeed it fit, it would just stay there, or if it didn't fit, you would get that screen where 
They all didn't fit, and you have the option of either selecting another trailer, or you can have the system do that for you. Can you show us how, if, if say, it comes up with the answer of how you want to separate it out, and you want to move one stop, like you see one piece is thrown off on a pallet, but you want to move that back. Is there like a drag and drop ability? Yeah, well, <coughs> there's several ways. You can do a drag and drop. Um, let me just, I can take this and move it over here so now 705 and 707 switched. Okay. The other thing I can do is I can go here and I can just key over what I want. So let's say I want 705 here. Well, so right. I'll just... actually, I mean, if you want us one order. Oh, okay. So if you go back to the order detail. Right. Well, what I would do there is let's say I take 701 and I want to take that order ID, and I'm going to put it on this okay. tray, this pallet here. I would just submit that. So now this is that product now that I just reassigned. Okay. It was white because it was empty. Now it's got been assigned this type of product. And is that that's all based on cubic space then? Well, the moving uh, the movement of the product you can do any way you want it. Or I mean the little red bar that tells us how full oh, it yes, is. Oh, yes. Yes. That's, that's estimating approximately how high that pallet is being stacked. Okay. And it's balancing these pallets. Um, I think if I was to balance this again, yeah, it's going to try to balance these out now even more amongst the pallets, given that I manually moved an order over here. Okay. Now, uh, Chris, and I don't know if you're the best person to answer this, or how how uh, how many customers do you guys sell just this product to, or is it typical that uh, this would go in as part of your WMS package? Well, it's, it's a it's a great question. It really depends on the complexity because we and, and kind of got to go into sales mode a little bit here because we have that ADC like solution all the way up to the full WMS for Tier One clients. We, we treat this really truly as an add-on to our own platform, meaning uh, Bushnell is looking to put this on right out of the gate. Uh, Harbor Wholesale put this on right out of the gate, while other people are looking at it completely away from the WMS application. So shipping manifest goes in all by itself. Container tracking goes in all by itself. Uh, truck builder can, can go in all by itself. We sell it, you know, as from a presentation, you know, model to uh, to prospects, partners, existing customers. You know, it's it's a it's a complementary solution to something they already have or something they're looking for in the future. So that's the, that's the easiest way I can answer that. Okay. So I mean, but do you have anybody who has a separate, completely separate ERP and WMS, and they use just this product. Uh, we there there are other instances of it. Um, Rich, is anybody at Pepsi, CVS, or Granger, anybody that I can I can that I can quote that are using this outside the Savant system? Well, Granger was using it for the DCs. And then the functionality was put into SAP. And then so they moved off of it, but I mean, for a period correct. of time. So that's I mean, they used you it know, for several years. And yeah. in their condition, they were primarily concerned about um, hazardous material. Right. And uh, for instance, if it's on an ocean container, you, if you put, you can put incompatibility requirements in here so that if there's an explosive and it's going in an ocean container, you can't have any. Uh, Acids, I think it is, or something else in that, on that trailer. Okay. But the short answer there is not not very many. Okay. But that's kind of the nature of the beast. It's it's nothing that we're going to look down upon. Sure. But you know, most deals that we win end up putting in a complete package, um, if that makes sense. But we don't we don't frown upon someone selecting another system and and saying no, you can't have this. I'm going to take my ball and leave the playground. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll take. Uh, we'll take whatever wins we can get. Sure. Okay. Fair enough.
Rich, are you still going, buddy? Yeah. Uh, if there, do you have any other questions on this, or? No, I think. Uh, and I think that's, that's basically it. the overview. Um, and then it's just a question of the different type of trailers that you define. Okay. The configuration process is typically a one-time exercise you go through. Okay. And then there's, there, is there a configurable interface, uh, or is that, you know, is that on the side in order to get the data in and out? Um, I would bounce that question to Chris as to, well, say it again because I was multitasking answering the email. I heard, is there a user, user configurable, user definable interface? I didn't hear that. Yeah, is there, well, no, I mean, is there a, a, say we had a file that we wanted to dump to this. I mean, is there a, a user definable um, interface that we can, we can just say, you know, uh, at least with, for instance, RoadNet or those other, other packages, we're able to say, kind of define what the file is coming in and, and going out. Is there anything like this? Built we're, we're into talking about this tool, or is it something that you guys would just customize for us? Rich, with, with Harbor being, you know, grabbing the data and giving, and in, in, in the Harbor's case, I think it's the most applicable because it starts the supply chain on their side. It's standing in front of the WMS, interfacing directly with uh, with the vision, correct? Yeah, so how we, are we doing the interface to the vision? Are we calling an API? Are we doing XML? Are we doing well, web services? We're creating a uh, the application is looking at a table within the Savant WMS. Okay. And um, but we could, you know, define a file format. Sure. Um, I just, you know, it all depends upon what the interface to the WMS would have to be. Huh. That I think is the. In this uh, case, just let me kind of bring it to light if it wasn't said already. Um, so one one of the players, and I think kind of the incumbent at this time, um, is uh, their ERP package is writing a uh, if a vertical ERP accounting system around um, produce you know production and, and distribution that's writing a, some WMS feature functionality. Um, so I think Ryan, where you're going with this question is. Can I call a different table? Can I have a configurable uh, interface? If I wanted to deploy this, what would we be doing? Well, we would instead of be pointing and pulling and pushing data into, you know, our WMS, um, they're all modular from that perspective. Uh, we'll, we'd be pushing and pulling data uh, to those new tables written in uh, your existing accounting system. Okay. Okay. So does that make sense? Yeah. So it sounds like it would just tie straight in then. Yeah, thinking. we wouldn't have to have, well, it can either tie straight in or depending on what their comfort level is, I don't want to speak for them, sometimes in other environments we're both dumping and pulling from intermediary, intermediary, inter intermediary yeah, table. Yeah, I'm a lot more comfortable with that than, than going directly yeah. into the database, but. Yeah, 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 it, it's whatever they want to do. Okay. Most people go to an intermediary table that has a trigger to, to applied to it that says when I get something, pull it over, when I push something, pull it over. Okay. All right. Well, I guess that's it. that's all I have for now. Um, okay. We'll definitely keep it in consideration, and and I appreciate you guys taking time to show it to us, and we'll uh, we'll take it from there. Perfect. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much for the time today. No problem. We'll talk to you guys later. Hey, you guys have a great weekend. Talk to you later, Rich. Okay. Bye. Have a good one. Bye bye.